As car enthusiasts, we all love power. And what's better than cheap and easy power? Air filters often promise this, simply by changing your stock air filter for a drop-in replacement. As engines are essentially glorified air pumps, the theory reigns true. Put more air in, get more power out. But is it as simple as that? To find out, and in the spirit of tire reviews, I'm gonna test two vehicles using nine different configurations of inlets, giving us the biggest data set that at least I could find on the internet for whether more air does mean more power. The two cars I'll be using are at opposite ends of the scale. The first car I'll be using is the Tire Reviews E92 M3. This car is a high revving naturally aspirated V8, so getting more power out of this is difficult. The second car will be this. It's my daily Skoda Octavia VRS, and this might seem like a bit of a boring choice, but the EA AAA engine in this is the same engine that comes in Audi S3s, Golf Rs, and many other configurations. This car at stock should have 220 horsepower, but it leaves factory with up to 300 horsepower. So it should be a really interesting example whether a boosty engine can get more power out of more airflow than a high revving, high maintenance V8. As I like data to be as accurate as possible, I've come to Dino Developments in North Hertfordshire who make dinos. What these guys don't know about getting accurate data isn't worth knowing. And this dyno is a very accurate dyno. It's not one of these hero dynos that overreads by 10, 20, 30% to make their customers feel happy. All they care about is the correct number, which for me is a little bit concerning about the M3 because they never made the 414 brake horsepower stock promised, even when they were new. So, It'll be interesting to find out what it's running now. As you can see, we've got a lot of different types of air filters on test to give a really broad range of data points. For the E92 M3, we're gonna be using a stock filter, which is about 50 pound. We're then gonna be using a drop-in k &M replacement filter, which is about 90 pounds, so almost double the price. Now the k &M doesn't promise any extra power, but it does flow more. Then, well, I think this is probably gonna be the most interesting is this, and I'm not gonna to touch it, it's a used k and air filter. It came out of my last M3. It did about 30,000 miles, and I've cleaned it as per k and instructions twice. So it's like you've serviced your car, and instead of putting a new paper filter in, you're just cleaning your existing filter. Fourth setup is gonna be this, the sexy, beautiful Aventuri carbon fiber intake system. Now this is an 800 pound system, and Aventuri say on their dyno, it brings eight to 12 horsepower gain. So it should be really interesting to see whether on my stock car, it does bring more power, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna bring more sexiness and it should bring a nice noise because that carbon fiber should rattle. And then the fifth run on the M3, we're just gonna take all the air filters out and we're just gonna run with the box empty to see if no filter can give it more power too. For the Skoda, we're gonna do roughly the same, but not with the dirty filter. We've got the stock 20 pound filter. We've got a 40 pound pipe across drop-in, which is absolutely tiny compared to the stock filter. Uh, a ram air induction system and then again we're going to use the car without any intake it should be super exciting and super fascinating to see whether this gives more power than this and whether this does any difference to this because that's definitely going to flow different but let's go get on the dyno and find out this is the tire reviews e92 m3 and this car has been nothing but trouble since purchase fortunately this video sponsor carly has helped me get unstuck and saved me time and money a number of times Carly is a Bluetooth onboard diagnostic adapter. These adapters are super handy for self-diagnosis of car faults, meaning you don't have to pay a garage every time your car throws a fault code. Carly, however, isn't just a diagnostic tool. It goes one step further and actually allows you to code disabled or hidden features into your car from your smartphone. One of the common faults on the E92 M3 is the throttle actuator is failing. When these fails, the car throws random errors, shuts down half of the VA and limits throttle on the remaining cylinders. Usually this means an unusable car and an expensive trip to the dealers. However, with Carly, I was able to diagnose that all the faults reported were linked to the throttle actuators, clear the fault codes, and it gave me full power again until it redetected the issue months later. It also helped me diagnose that an intermittent misfire was coming from call pack 6 which meant I just had to buy one call pack at £100 each instead of 8. The real party piece of Carly is coding in new features to your car. I can use Carly to do things like code out the seatbelt warning when I install harnesses, enable the TV while moving for passengers, change the indicator settings, change the stop start settings, the list is endless. Carly also has a really neat car history check feature, so when you're looking at buying a new car you can plug in the device to check for mileage tampering and the driving behaviour of past owners. This gives you the most information possible to ensure you're not buying a lemon. Right now, Tire Reviews viewers can get a 20% discount by heading over to mycarly.com and using the discount code tires.
I wonder. Finding out the stock power. Now we are putting the clean air filter in, the clean k and in. Clean out, clean in, but the paper filter, obviously a lot more filtration area and a bit more restrictive. So hopefully it should flow some more air, give us some more power. Right, so after about 24 runs, there was essentially no difference. Nothing we could do would give it more power. Whether it was airbox open, no filter, airbox open filter, stock filter, clean K&N, Eventuri. The only statistical difference was the dirty K&N, which this is the clean one, obviously. That dropped power a little bit, but again, not a huge amount. This just proves how hard it is to get power out of a normally aspirated engine and how good a job BMW have done with the intake system of this. So now we're gonna load up the Skoda and see if a boosty turbocharged engine will actually make any difference. Okay, run one, trying to find the stock power of not my VRS. Mine had a bit of an issue, I'll put the data on screen. So we're gonna see how much power this one should make about 245, not 225, which mine was spec access, a slightly newer engine. Got 230 horsepower so let's go put the pipe cross filter in and see if that tiny little thing gives us more power there just doesn't seem a need for this to be so small and so tiny i'm sure it lets more air through but the main job of an air filter is to filter the air and that i mean look at the difference we actually made some power four horsepower I thought it was doing something. Two thirty six. Two thirty six. So two thirty six on the first run, which is the most power yet. But it looks like the heat soak from the engine getting into the top of the air filter had uh, made it less consistent so then it dropped down to 231 whereas the pipe across was 234 so interesting so there you go does a performance air filter give you more performance no and yes frustratingly as expected nothing could really do anything for the e92 m3 that big normally aspirated highly strong v8 just wouldn't produce more power than it had with the stock filter. The only statistical difference was the dirty KNN, which dropped flow at high RPMs, which kind of makes sense, so dropped power. Lost about 10 power. So if you are thinking about using a KNN filter, they're good, and they did seem to make a slight bit of difference in noise, but I would make sure you stay on top of cleaning or do what I think I'm gonna do with the car and just put in a cheap paper filter every time it needs a service. The Eventuri, now, it was a little bit disappointing that this didn't make more power. However, my car is fully stock and I don't really know the history of it. So it might not be the healthiest example at the moment, but in the future, it's going to be. As part of the E92 M3 build series I'm doing for the Tire Reviews channel, one of the episodes is going to be power. And that is I have a full titanium Acropovic exhaust system and this, and then I'm going to get it mapped. So at that point, I'm going to go back and revisit this and see if a remapped car with a better exhaust system on it will have an advantage between stock. So subscribe for that if you're interested in seeing that in the future. The Skoda, well, that was the surprise of the day. Now, I don't think it's any surprise that this flows more air than this. You can see 
how restrictive this looks in comparison to this tiny bit of foam. But it was nice to see it was a four brake horsepower increase on every time we did a pull. The Ram Air system was the really interesting one from the Skoda side. Now that had a six brake horsepower increase on the first run, but because I was in a rush to fit it, I didn't fit the heat shield surround. So that meant on the second run, it started pulling in some hot air and it dropped down five horsepower. So it was just about stock. That's a really good lesson in how more air is good unless it's hot. Hot air bad, even if it's lots. So think about that as you're doing an induction system. Don't just put a cone filter on like this and then leave it open to the engine bay because pulling in hot air is rubbish for the engine. It just has to do things to compensate for that less dense air. That's the other reason this inventory sits inside the stock air box because it doesn't want the hot air from the engine. So that's the two lessons from this test. Dirty is bad. Don't have a dirty filter. Hot air is bad. If you're fitting a fancy induction kit, make sure you're sealing it off from the hot air from the engine because you're going to lose power. But on a boosty two litre Volkswagen Group engine, more flow did mean more power. And on the highly sprung E92 V8 that's stock, just, I just don't bother. The elephant in the room, filtration. Now I haven't tested this, but I'm pretty sure if I had tested, and if you want to see me test it, leave a note in the comment, I'm pretty sure this wouldn't filter as much as this, or these wouldn't filter as much as these. Now, one of my favorite YouTubers is Project Farm. If you've not checked out his channel, I will leave a link in the description to his air filter filtration test, because he did a very good job of filtering. And I'm gonna spoil the ending for you. It wasn't good for the cloth filters, and it was good for the paper filters. These seem to filter a lot better than these. So that's the other thing you have to balance off. Is the reduction in filtration worth a few extra horsepower? But that's a decision up to you. I hope you've enjoyed this test. I've had a lot of fun doing it. It's been a bit stressful and I'm sorry about some of the footage not being the best. It's really difficult to film in a dyno booth with light and sound, but I hope it was interesting nonetheless. If there's anything else you wanna see me do in the future, feel free to leave a comment below. As always, I'll try and answer everything. If you've got any questions, subscribe if you wanna see what happens to that E93 as it gets its suspension changed, its brake changed, its weight reduced, its power increased. Every time I make a change, I'm gonna test it on track. I know I've been promising this for a while, but the car's been a bit of a nightmare. I've had to do a lot of work to it to get it to track ready. And again, now I've run out of summer. So it looks like it's gonna be early 2021 when hopefully tracks will be a little bit more available and life will be a little bit more normal. Thanks again to Dino Developments for catering my OCD and letting me do run after run after run after run to get the data as perfect as possible. If you're in the market for a dyno, give these guys a call because they make the most precise dynos in the industry. And if you want your car tested, get on the phone, book your car in. They do dyno runs for a very reasonable price. But as always, safe motoring and see you next time.